Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, folks. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we have another edition of Chalk Talk with my guy, All22. And because, you know, I know you guys know me because you're here and you have a general idea of where to find him and his stuff and you like what we do, there's no need for the fluff. We're just going to get right into the film because the last time we had such a, such a good conversation that we didn't put one ounce of film up and you guys seem to love it. So today we're going to actually get into the nuts and bolts of what the Houston Texans do on the offensive side a little bit what they do on the defensive side a little bit, tell you our thoughts, you know, bounce some ideas off, and, and then we'll we'll go from there. So welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you for taking the time out to do this. How are you doing? Good, man. Good. No, thank you for, for having me. I uh, I felt bad last time because I felt like I talked too much and kept it, <laughs> kept it long. And number one, and like you said, we didn't even get to watch any plays. So you know, I'm glad we got a chance to do this. And hopefully, hey, man, hopefully we can do this, uh, what, two more times after this game? I hope so. I hope so. I'm looking forward to doing it. Too. No, let's just say this. We are we are going to do it two more times. I'm on man. I'm down with I'm it. I'm in the manifesting this year. I'm in the manifesting. So we are yeah, going man. to do it two more times. It's got a great opportunity, man. And it's and it's a worthy opponent too that's um that's good on both sides of the ball. So it'll be a great win, you know, if and when we're able to get it. I, w I will say they are completely different from week one. So much that I started watching week one. I like forget this. This ain't the same team that it is right now. So I don't I didn't even like anything that you see from me this week won't have anything with week one on it because they are not the same team, and quiet as the kip, we not the same team. Very different offense for us. I mean, it's it's night and day. The the smoothness, um, even even getting to and getting out of the huddle, things looked smoother. Um, I would agree. The only element that for me, I think, could persist is uh, D'Amico Ryan's is going to bring pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going. He's going to. You know, last week against the Browns, they didn't have to. No disrespect to Joe, but it's not 2008. He's not mobile. You know, you but didn't, it, have, it didn't to. have too much against the Colts either because I charted yeah. every play versus the Colts. And they only blitz five times. And he'll do that. It. I, I think he'll do that when, if and when, it's a third and six and Lamar scrambles out of there and gets the first down, the, the next third down or the next situation where, you know, they want Lamar to get rid of the ball quick. They're going to, they're going to bring a late blitz or sticks mm -hmm. blitz zero, which they brought two or three times in week one against us. So anyway, let's get to the film, but that that's the only element that I think will persist is that right there. Gotcha. So with this right here, they got the little short motion to kind of get a um, disadvantage with, with Newsom outside. You got the slant and go now for us. I'm thinking, let's just say Marlowe does not play. And we mm -hmm. got Brandon Stevens versus these receivers. So you got you got Nico Collins at one side. You got Mitchie at the top. I think Stevens, if, if Marlon does not play, I think Stevens should follow Nico. What, what, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, the only thing is, is that the, the times when we just got to be able to play zone no matter where he's lined up. Because mm -hmm. the one thing I notice is like some of these teams, especially the Browns, you know, if they follow you, you know, it's man free. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, so we've we're in Mike's system is more multiple than that. They'll they'll line up Marlon in the slot or whoever and then not play man. You know, even though they followed it, gave Stroud or the quarterback a pre-snap look that looks like man. Uh, Nico Collins is a beast, man. So yeah, he's man. going to make plays. I think regardless of who goes against him, it's just about giving him less time and less space to make, uh, you know, those six or seven catches happen on 12 targets instead of mm -hmm. eight or nine. And, and in this play in particular, I don't think we'll have the safeties that, that create busts like this. A lot of people, you know, kind of said this was Greg Newsom, but if you look at it, this safety right here takes the over and le leaves him out to dry. Leaves him Man, out to dry. I don't I, I feel like the, the Texans put the Browns in known situations mm -hmm. where they kind of knew what the Browns were going to do based on film. I really feel like, I mean, the players executed, but I really feel like the Texans coaches offensively uh, really out schemed and out coached the Browns defensive guys completely. I agree with that. I agree with that statement 100 percent because and I know that they both professionals on both sides of the ball, but it almost looked too easy. Too easy. And and I didn't see it didn't look like the same play concepts four or five times. To me, it was like it was like they had six or seven boxes checked off. Like, okay, we can do this out of this personnel group, this out of this personnel group. And we went to it once. Boom, we got our big play. Let's move on to the next one. We didn't they didn't need to come back to them a second time because by the time they got to each one of those check lock check boxes, uh, the game was pretty much over. Mm -hmm. Talk about this play right here, this sack by by Jonathan. Is it Grenard or Grenard? I, man, I, I, I say, I say Grenard. Yeah, I, it depends. I, I like him, man. I, 
Um, this is and correct me if I'm wrong. This is Anderson winning initially, and then Grenard gets the or Grenard winning initially, and then Anderson cleaning up. Yes, that's Grenard at the bottom winning, avoiding it, and then Anderson and uh, the big nose tackle was his Malik. Uh, yeah, they they, I wonder, Collins, they they finished it. I think I, I got an end zone view of this one. I do. I haven't figured out yet why they switch these guys' sides sometimes because generally Anderson's on the left mm -hmm. and Grenard is on the right. In this case, they got an opposite here. Man, them, them two are a load. I, I'm impressed by both of them. Uh, they haven't re signed Grenard. I believe he's in his fourth year. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got 12 and a half sacks this year, eight, eight, eight and a half sacks two years ago. They got a big decision on their hands, especially, you know, if he plays this well this week, man. The, guy, the guy's a baller. Good timing on everything he does while he's moving downhill, too. You see that swipe. Yeah, with that, that swipe, I talked about it on the other channel. That was a perfectly timed swipe. Yes. Perfect. Like like that right there, he can't even get his left hand on him because he's it's he already it over. Yep. Yeah. I think that's one thing, like, you know, with Owe, he'll have a move, but it'll be slightly later, slightly early. Grenard mm -hmm. looks like a guy that the things are almost perfectly timed mm -hmm. uh, in every case. While he's coming downhill, man, he's he seems like a guy who's dedicated to his angle, and he's either going to win with that move or he's not. Right. Uh, I, I like his decisiveness, man. He's a really good player. He he ate Ronnie Stanley up in the last game. He really did. And I think Stanley will be able to anchor better, hopefully. Uh, if I think, not, I think Stanley's we're in healthier. Hel yes. I hope he's healthier. But what I will say, I think he benefited the most from them drafting Will Anderson. Yeah. Because he, he had – he was a – I'm going to say he was an okay player, but he's been off the chain with the guy on the other side that he he's not the focal point. Well, you got you got to kind of – okay, you can't double me. So I'm not the focus anymore. I got a guy on the other end that can hunt just as well. So now I got some one-on-ones. And he really flourished this year, especially in the, the second half of the season as far as getting sacks and, you know, just leading that that rush group. Just that There's three three guys on that on that team that really get after the quarterback. Yeah. And, I mean, Jerry Hughes ain't a bad player either. He had nine mm -hmm. sacks last year, um, which, you know, some of it was late in the season. But he played well. He's not getting as many snaps this year. He's 35 years old. Uh, and then they picked up the young guy, 41, who was uh, out of Cincinnati. I think he got cut by the team that drafted him. I can never pronounce his first name. But so they got a good edge group out there, man. I'm, I'm impressed by the talent they've got, especially the young talent. What I was looking at in, in my notes, and I don't know how you feel about it. I said whenever 41 is in a game, if it's a run situation, run at him. Run at him. Yes, absolutely. He does not deal with blocks well, number one. Number two, he's not, he's not automatic reactions with his hands and his base. Mm -hmm. Everything's not timed up with him like it is with Will Anderson. Will Anderson's attack mode, <laughs> like and Grenard too, man. They're attack mode. I agree with you, man. I think I would. I look for Hughes to play more, and and Barnett. Barnett's been playing really well. He's got three and a half sacks in the last five games. He had he had three pressures in this game. That's him right there on the pressure on Flacco, I believe. Yep, that is. The thing is with us, and and this is what I like about what we do. So let's just say for the sake of it, they get this pressure. Now the thing is with, with Joe. Joe can't go anywhere. He's got nowhere to go, right? Eight, eight's going to get out of this. Eight's going to get out of this some kind of way. And now you got man, 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 man. He's going to have all this space to run. That's it's too much. Yeah. The, the, the standstill quarterbacks now. Like I said, I think there's, so much, there's so much that um, that Lamar forces defense to do, defenses to do, meaning I think I said this in a video that I put out last night. There's no sense in playing – bringing four and playing man free against Lamar. Uh, I think Tomlin actually said it best. He was like, why, why spy Lamar? It doesn't make any sense. He's just going to juke the guy after he gets out of there. That you, know, you, might as well, you might as well bring him um, and, and create some opportunities to make plays. Uh, look, I think, I think the Texans are going to have trouble covering all of our receivers and tight ends. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way towards uh, their DB group. Cause look, Derek Stingley's a baller and mm -hmm. you're seeing it. You're seeing it this year. It's not just the interceptions, though. I mean, Stingley's covering extremely well, and he's in great relationship to the receivers uh, for the most part. I think that's him covering Cooper at the top side of the it field is. in that like, a little in route. He reminds I think he looks so much on tape like Marcus Peters. Yeah, he's just so – he's smart, and I think he's playing leverage sometimes to let people throw the ball mm -hmm. on the other side so he can, so he can cut under it. Uh, he looks like a guy that's really smart, so that's a good comparison. His mannerisms and everything looks so much like Marcus Peters. And to the fact why I think he even takes gambles, too. Yeah. There were a couple of plays that, like, I, the video I put out this morning, I, put, I had a steal shot where everybody's in zone and he's following a guy across the field on a basic. Yeah. Game. I think I, I know. I think I know which player you're talking about. Uh, and then I talk, I, I watched um, the, the Texans presser 
and they talked about how they practiced this right here, their return. Oh, man, love it. Don't you just love that that moment yeah. right there when especially if it's on your sideline, mm -hmm. you know, it's on that's an amazing moment. You're just trying to get everybody back and make sure that the ref can run clean yeah. and you and you don't do anything as a coach or a player. And hopefully you ain't the up. one that the ref run into. <laughs> yeah. That look, I, I and again, I don't want to be disrespectful towards the the Browns offensive line, but um that it's a totally different situation offensive line for what the Texans are gonna see this week. There'll be more resistance, mm -hmm. there'll be cleaner technique. Uh, those tackles for the Browns really, really struggled so much so that they had to chip a lot of times just to get anything done in the pass game. They were chipping with the back on the one side and a tight end on the other consistently. Talk, talk about this play. This is the third and two. And so they've inserted, I think this is an extra lineman, number 53. And they don't get this. Tell me what tell me what you see out of this. Unbalanced, you know, tackle over, power. I think I remember this one. That's Anderson right to his side. But he doesn't wrong arm it here, I don't think. I think he tries to, but he, he steps a, down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like we, I know I talked about this in the video. Like who nobody blocks like that anymore. That's a chicken. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing there. Yeah. There's nothing there for Hunt at all. What's inside of Anderson there? Is he got a five or what? Let's see. Let me go back to the beginning. Yeah, sir. Like a little bit of under front. Mm -hmm. They went. They went in there a little heavy front because they was thinking goal. I said they he slid into the zero. Yes, yeah, sixty four so can't just mm -hmm. sixty four just doesn't take him down. Right. He, oh, he steps to him. Oh, cool, mm -hmm. cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, nice. He takes him head up and just go, just yeah. goes through him. Yeah, so their line of scrimmage has been reset. Brilliant stuff. I think it's a really smart defense. I think they're really well coached, and I don't know much about D'Amico Ryans, but just watching all the things they do in situations, situations like this one, uh, I think D'Amico Ryans must be a great teacher. Yeah. You know, because what, they're prepared what for stuff. Because you didn't hear – like, I love this cat coming out of college. This is Christian Harris. I love Christian him. Harris, yeah. Now, last year, you didn't hear much about him, but just this play right here, watch, watch how fast he gets over the top of this. <laughs> Gets, gets, Cause sixty six is holding him right now. Yeah, he reminds me of Queen a little bit. Mm hmm. I I can see that. Yeah, Cashman that. has come on and and gone crazy too. Perryman, like we were talking about before the show, seems to be the guy that they take off the field in nickel situations. Those those two is the is the guys that stay on or even on passing downs. Yep. Uh, Chris, Christian Harris smart too, man. I mean that fourth and two, he jumps that little out. Uh, yeah, which Flacco. is the next play? Here it is, right here. Yeah, Flacco's looking right there, and he just jumps it. Don't even move. He just sits there. Yep. I know he Stays said in the post game press press conference that um, they had he almost got it. Like maybe they played him earlier, and he almost got it. Mm. So he probably was waiting on it. Mm. And like he, like I said, he literally don't move. And situational, you know, it's just brilliant situationally because he understands he's got people behind him. So I'm not saying take a chance. It's not taking a chance. It's a calculated risk. People mm -hmm. think take a chance means let me try to make something happen. This is just smart. I'm going to take yeah. this route away, make him go to the second route in the exactly. progression, and ain't much anywhere there anyway. Because it's fourth and two. Fourth maybe. and two, yeah. So you might as well sit on everything short, and if they beat you over the top, if they got the balls to do that, sometimes you just you get, sometimes you just tip your hat to the other team. He had, a, he had a sack in this game too. I think he mm -hmm. had two real nice run stops outside of the one that you showed the previous play here. Uh, I'm a big fan of their defense. I think they're really fast. You could watch the film from week one. You could see how fast they were. Yeah. You could see how fast they collapsed on stuff. They're really good against the run. Um, I believe they're second in the league uh, yards per carry for the whole season. I think the old man of the group is Perryman. Because I remember Perryman at Miami, and it's been it's been a while. So yeah. if, I'm, if I'm if I'm correct, rookie. Second year, second year. Uh, I don't know what Cashman is. Where, wherever Petrie third, is, third or fourth. Petrie's yeah. second year, I think. Stingley second year or third, second or third. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I second. don't know who the other corner is. Um, but uh, Stephen Nelson. Nelson. Nelson's a vet. Nelson's a yeah, vet. He he got the he got the pick against Zay on the third down. He, he held uh, he held Zay's hip on the little drag route. Mm -hmm. um, he's also been got a couple of times this year by different teams. I think we're going to attack Nelson. I'll be honest with you. And I think we're going to attack uh, Petre and King, the, the nickel DB that they've got, as well as Carson. Carson. Carson is the guy that, that was on our team yep. um, early in the season. And, we, you know, we cut him. And now he's – I think he's a starter for them. Yep. He's, he's one of their starters. So that should be a guy we attack. Watch, watch this. Watch how quick – we talked about how fast they were. Watch how fast – Christian Harris gets through there. Mm. Now, granted, it's a small bus between um, 
the running back and the, the middle, wide yeah. teller. But just watch how fast he gets on top of Flacco before Flacco can even like do anything. I think they've got a really, you know, whatever some of these teams do, the really good defensive teams, I think they've got a great idea of when to bring, bring pressure versus when not to. And I don't know how to describe that in some ways. I just think D'Amico Ryans has pl has played and coached at a very high level for a very long time and has an intuitive sense about when to bring pressure. Mm -hmm. It's a different dynamic, though, with Lamar. Of course, you do this against Lamar to get the ball out of his hands, you know, to make right. sure he can't scramble. Um, that's the part that interests me a lot because in week one, we didn't know what we had in terms of – we. I keep calling it spread offense. And, and when I say spread, I mean – I really mean basketball is what I mean. Mm -hmm. I mean like you got like five or six guys who can score 16, 18, 20 points a game depending on the night. And that's what we have. We have so many guys who can beat you. Um, if they want to bring pressure, I think they're playing a dangerous game against the group we got now at wide receiver and tight end. Right, because we actually got guys that can win the one-on-one -on -one matches and, and do that. But this is one of the things I, I've been impressed with with C.J. Stroud. He does not get flustered. He stands in that pocket. His mechanics are fine. His shoulders and his feet are always aligned, and he just makes throws. Quick. Like this throw right here. He Like, because Greg Newsom, who blew another coverage, didn't – he Greg Newsom didn't even look at the, the this guy. No. Like, he never checked. He's stuck so, on the quarterback. Stuck on the quarterback. Uh, Denzel Ward carries the, the seam route. So he never comes off of it. Now, CJ mm -hmm. wants to throw it now, but he's off platform. He just throws a floater. And I reference this as a like a floater in the lane. Yeah. You, can't, you can't really you can't really drive it and you can't really put too much on it. You just got to find that nice sweet yeah, touch. spot. That's a little touch. And he, and he did that. And, and you remember when he does he does all these platform throws. Go ahead. Remember when he had a great game against Georgia in the college football playoffs? There was there were certain people saying, Oh, these things were schemed up for him. Oh, they mm -hmm. They created this for him. They created that. Well, we've now got a whole season of NFL film of him, probably 80% of his games playing at that level or close yep. to it. You know, this is just who C.J. Stroud is. He's a super smart guy, makes quick decisions. Um, hey, Bobby Sloak's done a great job there as an offense coordinator, but I, I don't think it's like, oh, Bobby Sloak did this with C.J. Stroud. He helped him do this. No, he has C.J. Stroud, who's pretty daggone good, and he's going to be really effective no matter who the offensive coordinator is because he's smart. That's the game that made me say C.J. Stroud was better than Bryce. Like that, what he did versus Georgia with really one receiver. Right. And if Marvin don't get hurt, they win the game. Say, I was going to say they might. I ain't going to say they're going to win it, but they have a chance. Because that, that game don't get ugly until Marvin goes down. They're in that game. They're battling back and forth, going up and down the field on what was probably, what, 11 of those guys probably in the NFL right in now? In the NFL right now. Them. Yeah. If they're not, they're they're probably going to be next year. Right. I mean, and he was ridiculously talented defense. Yeah. I think I think Stroud, man, even you could see moments. But to that point a little bit, there's two concepts in our week one game against them that They've been able to execute against other teams, and Kyle Hamilton takes one of one of those plays away from him, and Brandon Stevens takes away the other. We mm -hmm. kind of force we kind of force teams to get to that second or third option, right. take away the good ones, and by the time you get there, the the pass rush is on top of you, or they've mm -hmm. moved you a little bit. I, I think that I think um, I don't think they're going to be able to come in here under center and run the football the same way the St. The St. Louis Rams, the Los Angeles Rams did. <laughs> I, I think, and so what I'm reason why I lead with that is because the under center play action game, we shouldn't be so reactionary. Look how look at Cleveland react to this. Like everybody Man, is gone. The fast flow. I, I talked about this in the video. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it right at the, the moment of the fake pitch. Gone. All these cats. All gone. of them. Everybody. Everybody. Hustle is already outside of Miles Garrett. And the guard is gonna have a free access too. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's and you've got Nico Collins. Flow. You got Nico Collins backside. There's no, there's no awareness. There's no tag for anyone. Like, hey, you can't. You got to sit and wait because of what you got outside of you. This big, talented receiver, whatever, whatever it's called for the outside linebacker, the force player. There is no call here. There is no call. To me, this is this is Cleveland's defense being so aggressive and so focused on playing man and handling my man and my guy that you have a team that came in here with four, five, six play concepts and had these things drawn up on the whiteboard to take advantage of them, and they went six for six. Or maybe they went five for six. Or maybe they went four for four and didn't even have to do the last two. They executed at a high, high – like, 
this play is he just caught this ball. Singleton already knows it. Yeah. Because they're so aggressive. And and even though Cleveland played a little bit of zone, but I've known and you've probably known from the middle of the season on what you're gonna get from Cleveland is cover one. Yeah. You're gonna get when, it. When we were getting ready to play them in week four, um uh EA, who I haven't really seen do a whole lot of stuff recently. Me, me um, either. Yeah, he um he messaged me because we were talking about, you know, what could we do against them, et cetera. And he said, Coach, I'm seeing eighty percent man free. Mm -hmm. um, and to that point, I hadn't watched all the film and I was like, yeah, I don't know about 80 percent, but it's a lot. I still feel like it's a probably 65, 70 percent man free. And I think they I hate to use the word exposed at the NFL level, but I think they got exposed. This this is what I think. I'm thinking Cleveland thought, OK, you only have Nico Collins. Right. And Tank Dale's out. So on paper, my three DBs are better than your receivers and you're not going to block Miles Garrett all night. And that's what they, that was their game, you know. In a nutshell, that was their game plan. Yeah, and it didn't work. Yeah, I think Cleveland has feasted on teams where they they had that dynamic that you just described, mm -hmm. and that happened in some cases. That happened. This is Brevin Jordan, right? Yes, yes. Oh, I love I love my U tight ends. Yeah, it's it's twelve personnel into the boundary, right? Or is it thirteen personnel? Let's see. Let's see. It is. This is another 12. tight end up. That's thirteen. It's thirteen. Or maybe. I know. I know. This, this forty-seven. Is, that, that's Brevin. That's the fullback. That's Beck. Forty-seven. This, uh, and this shows. So twenty-two. All right. Mm -hmm. So either way, either way, it's a heavy personnel group. Look how committed the Browns are to the front. You know, the first level of the defense looks like six guys on the line of scrimmage, maybe seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you got your linebacker right here. Yep. They they all on the and it, it wasn't even a really good fake. No, the a really good fake. The fullbacks inserts inside, I believe. He's the outside tight end, and he inserts inside. Like a, I call it Jill Iso. Yeah. yeah. So he inserts inside, outside tight end. But same thing, um, I just watched the Rams against the Ooh, Lions. The cool. Yeah, they do the same thing. Yep. yep, do the same thing. Yep. And nobody stopped that either. <laughs> I mean, right. nobody stopped. The Lions stopped both times they ran it the other day just because C.J. Gardner-Johnson was sitting there on the tight end. Oh, but man. nobody else has stopped it. That that dude should be an outlaw for some of the hits he he bring, boy. <laughs> I love him. I love his attitude and mentality, man. Give me give me fifteen of him if I'm coaching again. That joker right there, boy. He would knock your head off. Let, let's finish with this one right here. Um, oh, I, I forgot what this one is. Twelve twenty one personnel. Oh, the, yeah. The post, yeah, yeah. The the corner post again. <laughs> so undisciplined, man. So undisciplined, yep. and and I think. I personally think this is Greg Newsom again, because I, I originally thought this was man. I originally thought it was man, but then when I looked at the underneath coverage, I'm like, no, this cover three. But Newsom yeah. just he's running with, um, who is that, Nico? So That's Nico, I think yeah. Newsom is responsible for this area right here. Even though it looked, even though he gives Ryan Harris in the business, I think Newsom is responsible for this area, and he's just so caught up on Nico because Newsom and the free safety trying to take that away. And I just love that man a crazy route. It's, it's the second time that we've seen it. You know, the other one to Jordan wasn't a downfield pass, but it's, it's two tight ends to the right, a wing alignment, tight end wing, mm -hmm. and quarterback boot to that side off the run action. Uh, you know, he's a right-handed quarterback, but these guys in the NFL, they can do it going to their left. It's a little different on the throw because you got to bring the hips back if it's a throwback post. Um, I, think you, I think you've got some things that the Ravens, hopefully, defensively, have said, hey, we're going to take this away. You're not going to get this big play generated on us. We're going to make you execute – 10, 12, 13 play drives. And look, in week one, week one, they had two long drives against us. Uh, I remember one of them was very long drive. But we're just so we're just how do you say this? You can maybe explain this dynamic better than me. Certain defenses, if you get them to the 10th, 12th, 13th play drive, they're not the same players that late in the possession that they were on the first two plays. I, I'll say this from our guys are from, from this line to this line, you get a different defense. Yeah, and that, that's not not saying you get different calls or you get different players. It's like the mentality shifts. Yeah, we're just as good and we're better, maybe better. Is like you're saying we're mm -hmm. we don't we don't maybe there's physical fatigue, but I some defenses break when you right. get them to the eighth, tenth, twelfth play of a possession of a drive. Even if that drive happens in the second quarter, ours doesn't. And even if you score, the next time we get in that situation, there's no mental give in at all to these dudes. You know, I hate talking about 2018, and I don't want you to either because it's a waste of time. But the mentality of the defense is mm -hmm. vastly different. Agreed. This 
this is like this defense is like a fighter who can win by knockout in the first round, mm -hmm. who can win by decision, who can win by knockout in the tenth round, who can, you know, whatever comparison you want to make as to a mixed martial arts or boxer, our guys can win either way. Yep, I, I will say this: they, they, the rotation of the D line, Love is it. is what I think keeps that that mentality yep. later in the drive because when you take. Uh, the first guys out, whether that be Pierce and Matabike, and you bring mm -hmm. in Travis Jones and and Urban or whoever else, the drop off ain't. I mean, it's a little drop off, but it ain't much. And them guys, those dudes can with, play, man. Just as much force. Then you same yeah. thing on your edge guys. You take your your first line edge guys out. You come with your second. You know, with 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 uh, Clowney and Van Noy, they just as good as the first two going. They even better pass rushers because I think yeah. they're gonna start the game with. With Malik and and Owe as our edge guys to be run stoppers, and then when they get in pass situations, you run Clowney and Renault in there. We have a lot of talent, and we're what you just said is we're very deep. You know, we didn't have that. I don't think last year to an extent we did, uh, but they're just so deep defensively that it's you know how it is to be coaching a kid or a player, and hey man, you're going to get twenty snaps a game or whatever that number is, 22, 24 snaps a game. When that kid goes on the field, they play their ass off for yep. that, those 20, 24 snaps a game. And that seems to be what you see here with those guys that either get rotated in or, um, you know, strategically come in on pass downs. I, I think we I, got – I didn't think about that, but that's a perfect analogy, especially the person that I think of when you say that is Brent Urban. Those mm -hmm. 10 to 15 plays he get, falls to the wall. All out. Yep. We used to tell kids like, "Hey, man, average football play is seven seconds. So you going, you gonna get three, four plays on this drive. Hopefully, we get a stop. So, but, but you give me seven seconds, four times. That's twenty eight seconds of max effort. Brent Urban is that kind of dude. Actually, the whole damn defense is. I mean, the, have you have you seen a zero? I call a zero like no effort. Mm -hmm. Have you seen anything close to a zero once with this defense this year? I haven't seen no. one. Not I, one. I noticed that in the first couple of games, they run to the ball like no other, like like no other. If you if you look at defense in the past, and we've had decent, good defenses, but yeah. the the and you coach defense, so this might be a frame a, a phrase that you familiar with. Get in the frame. Absolutely, they get in the frame as many people as possible. Get in the frame. So when like when it just zoomed in right there, get in the frame. Hey, can, you know the uh, can you pull it? Can you pause it and pull a picture? Put a circle up. Hit the circle. Okay. Yeah. All right. In We're in right. the middle, yeah. We said get your foot in there. Yeah. <laughs> now that's not realistic. That's not realistic. It's not realistic. It's too small. But that's what we said. We said get your foot in there. And yeah. and you 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 know the the level that that those well, the all the, the tackle is made the tackle is made right there. We <laughs> said get your foot in there. Get your foot in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't possible. It's not mm -hmm. possible. But we would tell them like that's the standard that you got to play at sometimes to beat a team that's better than you. I don't think this Texans offense is better than our defense, but I think they're a threat, and I All think right. they're smart and well coached, and they'll they'll have things schemed up for us. The problem is, uh, Jim Swartz, you know, great coach. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a Baltimore dude, so respect to him. Having said that, their defense is kind of simplistic. Uh, the Ravens is not. We might be in one of four or five different coverages when you run your quote specific or designed play that you think is going to take advantage of us, we might be in a totally different look, and you might not get what you think. That's Perryman, right? Mm, that's Perryman right there, right. He's really good against the run. But when they when they go to that nickel, he comes out, and they run the other two guys in there. But this is, when they, this if is, they're in a heavy set, and they're in 4-3, he's in there. He still got a little yeah. juice left. Yeah. I love, I'm wondering – I'm interested in what their edge players are going to do against option stuff. I mean, clearly Joe Flacco's not keeping the ball here. Right. You know, but I'm interested in what they do because if you do this – if you just run down the line, like that's what the Lions did against us, that's what other teams do against us. Amara's going to keep that thing, and now we've got the complimentary the RPO stuff on it, the snag, you know, or Lamar keeping it around the edge. Yeah, our run game's not going to dominate this team right. from a running back standpoint. But with Lamar getting hopefully 40, 50, 60 yards, and the running backs generating 40, 50, 60 yards, if we get to 120, don't turn the football over. I think I think we got a great chance to you I know host you. the AFC title game. I agree, hundred percent, hundred percent. So with, with that being said, man, I, I appreciate you, you coming through. And for those that don't know, uh, let them know where they can find your work at. Well, all 22 films on uh, YouTube. I'm not even going to throw the Twitter handle out there because it's so messed up, but it's all 22 films. Or let's do it this way. You can find Coach Evans and then find mine through his. <laughs> That'll work uh, too. 
but I appreciate you having me on, man. It's um, it's a unique circumstance by which we get extra games here to do this. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's let's plan on next week, same time, same channel. Hey, same thing, same thing. So we're gonna manifest this win, and then we'll be back here at the same time, and uh, we'll see you guys soon, man. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, and the link to coach uh, coach's channel. And I, it's funny calling another coach coach, but <laughs> I do I feel the same way. <laughs> It'll be in the description, man. Thank you guys, and I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love.